This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Donated and bombed peens of dead male feminists. The copywriter asked me to change peens to penises because she said that peens was a less common word, but I overruled her because it's my book and I wrote it. Many of our readers won't want to read a book like that. We are a commercial publishing house. So the Hitler thing, you know, was just presented as fact, and then he took some grapes from a bowl and ate them. So I conceded that, yes, OK, the fart should be included somewhere in the book because it was such a pivotal one. But I suggested that it might be introduced, you know, somewhere after page 11, once I'd established myself properly as not being like Hitler and gained the trust of the reader, once I'd proved to them that I could write about things other than farts. It's the same with stand-up, I told my female editor. First gain the audience's trust, and then you can do whatever you like. Even fart, she says. Yes, even fart, I said. I see, she said. She's got really high voice. The reader, I explained to my editor, who was a woman, doesn't know who I am yet. I haven't introduced myself properly. They don't know anything about me. I don't want them thinking, oh, who's this fart-obsessed idiot? Oh, no, this book isn't going to be all about farts, is it? Oh, I hate farts at the best of times. I oh, hope it's not going to be like a book version of the musical Cats without the cats and music, but with farts and pages instead. Do you know, I hated Cats the Musical. I went to see it. I just couldn't bear it. First of all, a cat came out and sang a song. And, that, and I thought, oh, God. And then another cat came out and did a dance. I thought, oh, God, not. And then two more cats came out and sang a duet. After about half an hour, I thought, oh, God. It's not all about cats, is it? Now, I suspected that one of them might even be a human in a cat's costume. Bonnie, uh, Bonnie... Bonnie Langford, I think its name was. But it was only when it sang and sprayed all over the first five rows that I was completely convinced of it, that it was indeed a real cat. I don't want them thinking I'm a one-fart pony or a one-trick fart or one-pony's fart trick, I said. Also, what if the head of women, Jimmy Somerville from Bronsky Beat, hears on the feminist practice and post-structuralist theory lecture grapevine that this book is supposed to be about feminism and becomes so infuriated and confused by all this early fart discourse that he only reads the introduction and then writes a horrible review of it for the spectator with the headline, Bridget Christie is not a feminist, she's a flatulist in feminist clothing. I mean, what of his horrible reviews? There was the first thing that comes up if you search for my name, which I've never done. It happens all the time. And then your family thinks you're deluded and lying about your career because they only see the terrible things that people say about you. Look, my auntie is a nun in California, right? My brother, who lives in the States, just outside Washington, he's told her that I'm doing really well. What if she looks me up on the convent computer with some other nuns and they all see the head of women, Jimmy Somerville from Bronsky Beat's horrible review? I just have to hope and pray that my auntie's convent doesn't have internet access. I'm Irish, right? My Catholic priest follows my career as well. What if he sees the horrible review and thinks I just write about farts? That's a conversation I do not want to have. I've already got to try and find a way of broaching the thorny issue of abortion with him. Farts might just be a step too far. I'll be persona non grata on the feminist panel talk debate circuit and at the altar. This book is turning into a bit of a nightmare for me, I told my editor. Don't worry about the head of women, Jimmy Somerville from Bronsky Beat, my editor said. You have to make it clear right from the beginning of the book that you're not going to be answering any questions in this book. She's looking at me, by the way, in the studio through the window. I just thought I'd tell you that. She didn't know I was going to do this voice of hers and she looks really angry. You're not going to be answering any questions in this book or even asking any. This book is going to be in the humour section in bookshops, not in the critical thinking section. No one's going to be thinking as they read this book let alone critically, and if they are, you've written it wrong. No one's expecting you to be the next de Beauvoir or Frieden or Hildegard of Bingen. It just needs to not be shit and to not have loads of photographs of you in school plays in it. So that made me feel slightly better, but I was still worried. I'd been burned by farts before. This was a review for my 2012 Edinburgh Fringe show, War Donkey. If you think a tape of fart sound effects is the last word in quality stand-up, then you may enjoy the show. For everyone else, it's probably best avoided. And the farts are the best jokes. In a world where female comics are treated seriously, they will still sometimes get a bad review, but it won't be because of their gender. I really wanted to like this show, but don't let Christy take your money and give you nothing but farts in return. The list. So yes, I have to talk about farts, I'm afraid, because in April 2012, one of them changed the course of my life forever.
It wasn't a private fart. This was a very public fart. It's the reason I've been commissioned to write this book. My views on everything from your...